Hello physics learners, today we're going to carry on with electric circuits, internal resistance within an electric circuit. Now in the previous video, we looked at this formula over here. If you missed that video, you may want to go back and watch it first. In this video, I'm going to do a two minute recap and then we're going to go tackle a question using this formula. Right, so on the screen, you can see that my EMF formula says the following. EMF okay, is equal to V external plus V internal. What that means is the terminals. If I attach the terminals of a battery to a voltmeter, so attach a voltmeter across the terminals of a battery and my switch is open, open switch, no current flowing, that voltmeter will read the EMF. That's the maximum energy provided per unit charge. Okay, by the battery, maximum energy provided by the battery per unit charge or per coulomb. When I close that switch, now there's current flowing through my circuit, there's current flowing through my battery, and that voltmeter connected across the terminals of the battery will now no longer read the EMF. That reading will drop and it will now read V external or V terminal or V load, the external potential difference. So in our example, we said if 1.5 was the EMF, then I close the switch and that reading drops to 1.2. 1.2 is V external. Now, what happened to the 0 0.3? That 0 0.3 we informally refer to as lost volts. Okay, more correctly, it's V internal. Then we derive this formula as you can see here. Check out that previous video if you'd want to know how I got this or to understand a little bit more about this. Now, let's go on to a question where I have to use this formula. What you're seeing on your screen here is a little question that I took from a past paper. As you can see, when you are dealing with electric circuits, you're always going to get given a little bit of writing above and below the circuit. You're going to get given a circuit with extra information on it and then questions associated with the circuit. Always read your paragraph before or after your circuit and check to see that all the information is provided on the diagram. So they give me the EMF and what I like to do is I like to list the information out on the side as well. The EMF is 20 volts over here. They also give me over here, the internal resistance of the battery, that's baby R, that's one ohm. And as you can see, they're giving me eight ohms over here. So that is a resistor within the external circuit, as well as a five ohm and a 10 ohm, which appear to be connected in parallel. Now, how do you know? Well, if you follow the main wire of the circuit, the main conducting wire, you can see that the total current will pass through the eight ohm. And when the branch of the circuit split, so over there where I'm drawing the little dot. Some of the current will travel through the five ohm and some will travel through the 10 ohm. That's how we know that they're connected in parallel. Right, now, before, they even, before I even read the questions, I'm just going to assess the question and think about it for a second. I have the EMF of the circuit. I have baby R. Can I work out big R or R external? Well, yes, I can, because I have the value of all the resistors in the external circuit. Okay, so I'm assuming that they're probably going to ask me about current because think of our formula. Our formula that we learned is EMF equals big I open bracket R big R plus baby R. I have the EMF, I have baby R, I can work out big R. They're probably going to ask me about the total current in the circuit and that is exactly what they do in the first question. They ask me to calculate the current in the 8 ohm resistor. And now you might be thinking, ma'am, they said calculate the current in the 8 ohm resistor, not the total current. Well, think about it. The 8 ohm resistor is connected in series. And we know that the total current flows through the series circuit. So what I mean is the total current will flow through all this all of this, the total current will flow through the 8 ohm. It's only when it reaches this point over here that the total current splits. So when they ask for the current in the 8 ohm resistor, they're actually asking for the total current. So thinking about my plan of action, how I would approach this question is in order to get the total current, which is big I, I would work out the total external resistance first. Then I would plug everything or substitute everything into this formula and work out I. Let me show you. 
My first step is to calculate the total external resistance or big R of the circuits. Now remember, in order to do that, I need to consider the following. I have a connection over here in parallel and I have a resistor in series. So what I'm first going to have to do is calculate this, the parallel component or the effective resistance of the parallel combination. And then afterwards, in a separate calculation, add the eight ohms that is in series. So what I did is I worked out the parallel resistance, the effective resistance of the five and the 10 ohms connected in parallel. Note how I put the formula first, then I subbed in, and then I worked out what RP is. Remember, one of the RP is three over 10. So RP is the reciprocal of that. You need to show that in its own separate line. Don't put it all, put it all in one line because then mathematically it's incorrect. Then again, in a separate line, I use those three dots, which means therefore the total R external is that 10 over three, which is the parallel resistance. Note how I did not round off yet. So 10 over three plus the eight ohms, which is over here connected in series. Then I get 11,33, although I am not going to round off yet, so I'm keeping it as the fraction 34 over 3. Now, with that, now that I calculated big R, I'm now going to use that in my EMA formula to calculate I, or current. So as you can see, I've first written my blank formula first. Then I subbed into my formula, so they tell me the EMF is 20. I sub that in the place of EMF. They tell me that the internal resistance, that's baby R, is 1. I sub 1 in the place of baby R. And then the 34 over 3 is big R. I sub that in the place of big R. Now I need to solve for I. Now note, you're basically going to add the 34 over 3 to the 1. So do that addition sum first. And then to solve for I, you're going to say 20 divided by that sum. And when I do that, I get 1,62 amperes. Remember your unit. If you don't put your unit, you're going to get the question wrong. Now, the next question asks you to calculate the potential difference or the voltage across the 5 ohm resistor. Now note, the 5 ohm resistor is connected in parallel with the 10 ohm resistor. So there's lots of different ways to do this. If I really wanted to, what I could do is I could say, okay, to calculate the potential difference, which is V, across the 5 ohm resistor, then I need to use R, which is 5 ohms, but then the current that I use needs to be not the total current, but the split current. And I can calculate the split current using the ratio of the resistances. That's the one way to do it. The other way to do it is to think about what we mean when we say resistors connected in parallel have the same voltage, okay? So the voltage or the potential difference across resistors in parallel is the same. So what I mean by that is the voltage across the parallel combination is the same as the voltage across the 5 ohm, which is the same as the voltage, ooh, voltage across the 10 ohm. So essentially, if I can calculate the voltage across the parallel combination, then that will be the same as the potential difference or the voltage across the 5 ohm. Now, how do I get the voltage across the parallel connection? Let's think about it. Well, if I know the resistance of the parallel connection, which I do, it is 10 over 3 ohms, okay, in its fraction form, and I know the total current flowing through the parallel combination, then I can calculate the voltage in parallel, or the potential difference across the parallel combination, which is the same as the potential difference across the 5 ohm resistor, because voltage in parallel is the same. Okay, so that means the voltage across the 5 ohm will be the same as the voltage across the 10 ohm. Now, this is where a lot of students go wrong. They say, okay, cool. The resistance in parallel is 10 over 3. Now, how did I know that? If we think about the previous question that we did, we will come to the conclusion that the resistance in parallel is 10 over 3. We worked that out. Or 3, 3, 3, 3, 3, 3. But 
how do I get the total current or the current flowing through the parallel combination? Now, I know that the current splits four resistors connected in parallel. But if you think about the parallel combination overall, so both of them together, the total current does flow through that parallel combination. So the current that I'm going to be using here is the total current. And where did I get that from? Well, we connected that, calculated that in the previous question, 1,62. Now, because I am answering a new question, I may use the rounded off version of my current answer, 1,62 amperes. However, if I use the non-rounded off version, that's also okay. So the non-rounded off version is 60 over 37. Right, so now, how do I calculate the potential difference? Well, remember, we need to think of our formula over here. This is my Ohm's Law formula. I can use that to calculate potential difference as long as I have the current and the resistance. So I'm going to write down my formula, and you need to remember, grade 11s and grade 12s, to always write your formula down as it states on your formula sheet. So my formula is like this on my formula sheet. Now, if I want to rearrange it and say, okay, but I know the potential difference is equal to I multiplied by R, I can do that. As long as you write it down first, as it states on your formula sheet. Then I know that my current is 1,62 amperes, and my resistance, remember, we're working out the voltage across the parallel connection. So now I'm going to use the resistance of the parallel connection. It's 10 over 3, or 3,33333. So I'm going to work that out quickly on my calculator and I get my voltage across the parallel combination is 5,405 volts. Now, yes, I can round that off 5,041 volts if I wish. Remember the rule in science and physical sciences and physics is to round off to at least two decimal places. It can be more. Remember your units. Now, just to end off, remember, you can say, but ma'am, you just calculated the voltage or the potential difference across the parallel. You see, you said VP. But remember, because the resistors are connected in parallel, the voltage is the same. And that's one of the fundamental rules that we learned in grade 10. I hope this helps. If you would like to see another video where I go over these sort of circuit calculations, especially those involving internal resistance, like this video, comment down below. See you in the next lesson, everyone.